I moved to California because I was married to someone I didn't really like anymore and he came out here to pursue an acting career and I was in a Broadway show and I stayed in New York and then I came out here out of guilt. Yeah. I was having too good of a time as a single lady in a Broadway show with a little baby. So then I came and he picked me up at the airport and he lived in fucking Manhattan Beach. It was, I came from Broadway living in the village to Manhattan Beach. I couldn't leave my house, it was so hideous. The people and, oh, it was awful. I've lived in Venice around 20 years. All the other times I've been back and forth living in New York, I hated LA. Venice is the only place that I feel like it's eclectic and artistic and there's too many yuppies now, but that's okay. It's just beautiful and it's paradise by the ocean and every type of person and people are friendly. I feel like I live in a small town. I was born in uh, Brooklyn, New York in Crown Heights to a very working class family. My parents were Marxists. My mother was a member of the Communist Party. We were brought up very much about social justice and enemies of religion. It was very chaotic, terrible, because my mother was mentally ill, so she would go to the nut house a lot. And then my dad died when I was like 14. It wasn't a harmonious house. It was a lot of screaming about spending too much money. And Let's go lie down. It was a terrible, horrible. I'm scarred as far as, you know, I think that my model for relationships is very warped. He had pretty eyes, that was it. He was an alcoholic, he died at a young age. And then I was married and had a second child. Then I left him and followed some, unemplo some unemployed writer. I was bored. They were boring and uh, they weren't the right person for me, but the, it wasn't a good way to leave them. Because I had security, I had a big house, and I wasn't being creative. I was just drinking and drugging and cooking and entertaining a lot. So his career did well for my entertaining. Who's this girl inside there? Oh, I like that picture. It's, it's um, Paz de la Huerta from Broadway Empire. She's the sexiest girl around. But over here, look who I have. Old people, fabulous old people. Tony Curtis, Louise Nevelson, and he's just an Italian guy. Look, isn't he fabulous? <laughs> I was never faithful to anyone except Marcel for the last year and a half in my whole life. Tell me about Marcel. Who's Marcel? Marcel is the person I share my life with now. How old is he? He's going to be 41 at his next birthday. And how old are you? 73. I mean, I've been to bed with younger men, but not this kind of thing. They think that if you're over 60, no, maybe 50 in our culture in California, that you don't have sex, that it doesn't exist. It's great. It's the same as it was at 23. And it's all in your head. I mean, you don't suddenly... I think if you have a, a shutdown attitude about sex at 23, it's going to be the same at 73. You might have learned a few tricks along the way, but I think it's all in your attitude. Sometimes I get freaked out that my, you know, my skin doesn't look like his skin. <laughs> I know people my age that haven't been interested in sex for 20 years. Haven't had a dick in 20 years. <laughs> I always cheated on, I just did what I wanted, you know, and I think I did it when I was pissed off at somebody. I just go find somebody. Or when I wanted out and I didn't have the nerve to do it. But somehow since I met Marcel, it's not even a commitment. It's like a no-brainer. And it's, this relationship has given me a, an arena to look at me. Because he, I can't manipulate him or pussy whip him or win. I've met my match. What's your philosophy on monogamy in general? Do you think it's something that's a, just an un, unattainable ideal or do you think it's possible? I think it's possible. But I don't think you can legislate it. And I don't think it's a deal breaker if somebody gets drunk and fucks somebody one night. You know what I mean? That's not, if you have a great relationship, that's not a deal breaker. But if somebody has the need to be with someone else, it really usually has nothing to do with the relationship. But it has to do with their ego or their Whatever. I don't think men are uh, basically very monogamous by nature. You think men are less monogamous than women? Yes, by nature. But I mean, like, speaking for myself alone, I must be a man. Women have to make a story up about it. That they're in love or they're very interesting or this person is spiritual. You know what? 
you just wanted to get out and get laid and have attention. Over a long period of time, sex changes. But I mean, when you first meet somebody, you could spend like the first two weeks in bed. Well, then life comes in and you have work, you have a career, you have this, that. But I don't think if things are good in a relationship and somebody's not angry or resentful, that it's just an even flow. It's not the same thing as the beginning, but who cares? Sex is sex, you know, it's like how different it's going to be. But it's all the, it's all the building up to it and the flirting and the somebody pursuing you. When you're married, that doesn't happen. So what, so what's, the, so what about marriage? Is it a doomed institution? No, I think people, people want to be together with a partner and want to have kids and all that. And I think that, but I think that I don't think we can put these rules and expectations. It's what, what either party can live with. I don't mean settle for, I mean be comfortable. I don't follow trends, but I think that you have to have an eye. It's like being artistic. You have to know what looks good on you. Okay. I only follow my own taste. I mean, I look at fashion magazines and if it's something that I think I would love, but I don't go, oh, this year everybody's wearing the hems here. I'm going to do that. I kind of have, I've always had my own look and I've always spent too much money on clothes compared to what I have. She is fashion forward. I wouldn't say that she's trendy or any of that. She has beautiful clothes. How long you've been designing wardrobe? I don't know how many years, maybe 10. Before that, I was a dancer for 25 years. No, I have a tattoo here. Where? Here. It's, it's calla lilies. Beautiful calla lilies. Tell me about this operation you're going into. Oi! I have what's called a prolapsed bladder, which means your bladder is falling out of your pussy, like a lemon sticks out of you. It's not sexy. And they're gonna take out my uterus, which I don't need anymore. And they leave in the ovaries, which you do need until you die. And then they're gonna, they take the bladder and they put a little hammock, like a mesh wire, and they lift it up and they sew it back into place. Amazing. And I'll be good as new. And they take a little pussy tuck, so you're gonna be this, like you were before you had two babies. How I feel about love is I'm trying to learn at 73 to believe and feel and internalize that somebody loves me their way not my idea of what they should be doing I think it's a lot about trust even though they may not be doing the demonstrative things that you have in your agenda that they really love you and to trust that and to let them love you the way they love you, not the way you want to be loved. Being in love is like being high. I mean, you're wild and you feel it. And I think that has to transform into love. Because that state is like, you know, snorting coke. It's not a state that you can live in all the time. And things happen between people. And sometimes it's amazing, sometimes you're bored, sometimes you're angry, whatever. And in love doesn't, doesn't go through those times, but I think love does. I don't say you have to work on love, but if you feel it, I think you have to work on not trashing it. It's like that movie Blue Valentine. I feel like it really was a very strong rendition of what people that start out loving each other do. A lot of people watch Blue Valentine and say like, oh, well, it just shows that no matter how happy you start out, it's fucked in the end. I think that's too fatalistic. I don't think that's true. There are people that have been together for 40, 50 years. It takes uh, tolerance and love <laughs> and being in reality about just life. It takes people that want to create happiness around them too. Have a good time is my advice. Be yourself. 
be yourself and be happy with yourself and some you know no one's gonna love you if you're not happy with yourself <laughs>